Hey HF family, welcome to our online Sunday service. We wanted to let you know that as a staff, we have been praying for you and your family and trust that you're finding new and creative ways to keep busy while we quarantine. I know our home feels a little chaotic some days as we are now a month into this remote learning. But I try to remind myself on those tougher days that this is a precious gift of time that we've been given back with our families. And I say it a little louder on the days when we really need it. Perhaps you've been busy just catching up on some much needed rest, reading a book that you had put off, maybe even learning a new skill. Finding those things that help us look forward to a mundane day encourages our physical, our mental, even our spiritual well-being. Isaiah 43, 19 says, See, I am doing a new thing. Do you not perceive it? I am making a way in the wilderness and streams in the wasteland. I wonder where we can all discover some new life in the middle of this strange season. The new life that awaits our discovery is oftentimes found in the chaos and in the middle of the work. So be encouraged this morning as we go into this next week and allow God to show us something new that he's doing. If you're tuning in with us for the first time this morning, we just want to take a moment and say hello. We look forward to the opportunity to meet together in person, hopefully one day soon. You'll also see a link below, which is our online connection card, and we'd be so honored if you just took a moment to fill that out. Again, thank you for being with us. If you have kiddos in your home, you're going to want to check out our really cool content over on our HF family page that will help grow your kids in their faith. And ladies, if you have not yet tuned in to Women in the Word, it's happening every Wednesday at 7 p.m. We get around a Zoom call and we just share life together and just laugh, connect, and um, it's been such a great time to be able to dig into God's Word and seek Him during this season. Again, you can find all the information in that link to the call at our HF Church family page. We thank you again for your faithfulness and giving back to the Lord your tithes, your offerings, and your Faith Promise missions giving can still be received both at the church, either by sending a check, or you can go on to hamiltonag.church onto our website and just click on the Give button and it will securely lead you through um, donating online. Again, thank you for your support and for your faithfulness. At this time, I'm going to turn it over to Pastor Ben as he leads us this morning in worship. Good morning, my name is Pastor Ben and we are so excited that you're here to worship with us this morning. Let's pray together. Lord, thank you that we can trust you, uh, that you're our King, that you're our Lord, and this morning as we come before you to worship you and lift you high, we fix our eyes on you, we set our hearts on you, and I just pray that in this time you would be near to us and that you would speak to us. We love you and we pray this all in the matchless name of Jesus, amen.
above it all. Hallelujah, God, unshakable. Hallelujah, you have done great things. Yes, you have. Yes, you have. Hallelujah, God, above it all. Hallelujah, God, unshakable. Conquer the grave, you free every captive and break every chain. Oh God, you have done great things. We dance in your freedom, awaken to life. Oh Jesus, our Savior, your name lifted high. Oh God, you have done great things. You have done great. You 
are here Mending every heart I worship you, Lord I worship you Cause you are, you are Waymaker, miracle worker Promise keeper Light in the darkness My God, that is who you are Yeah, you are Waymaker, miracle worker Promise keeper Light in the darkness My God, that is who you are 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 Yeah, that is who you are That is who you are That is who you are That is even when, even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop working. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop working Even when I don't see you, you're working Even when I don't feel you, you're working You never stop, you never stop working You never stop, you never stop working Even when I don't see you, you're working Even when I don't feel you, you're working You never stop, you never stop working Never stop, you never stop. We make a miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. We make you are. We make a miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. That is. That is who you are. 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 We thank you that that is who you are. Lord, that you're our way maker. Lord, that you keep all of your promises. Lord, that you never fail us. Lord, this morning we come before you and we're in awe of just all that you are. God, we love you and we trust you. God, we thank you that when we can't see it or feel it, Lord, that you're still making a way. God, we love you. We thank you. And this morning, as we continue to worship by reading your word, I pray that you would speak to us, that you would draw us to yourself. We love you. We thank you. We pray this all in the matchless name of Jesus. Well, good morning. If it's morning and you're joining us on Sunday, April 26th, uh, we're grateful to have you with us and we're thankful um, that we continue to be able to meet together kind of like this. And uh, we just want to encourage you today. That's my goal for this morning. And we just want to take a moment to pray and to thank the Lord for the grace and the mercy that he's shown us thus far. But will you just join me for a moment in prayer before we get into the message for today? Father, we thank you for your goodness and your grace. Lord, we, we accept the challenge. We accept the changes that we're facing. And we just pray that you would stretch us that much more and that you would allow us to be encouraged this morning as we honor you, as we serve you. And I pray that your word would encourage us and lift us up. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, we're in our Everyday Changed series. <coughs> Excuse me. And uh, 
Uh, if you joined us last week, Pastor Ben shared a powerful message as well, and I hope that that encouraged you. Um, and we're going to continue in that vein of every day changed. Uh, ever since Easter, everything was changed. Everything was different because of what Jesus did. And, um, you know, I remember about six years ago when my wife and I first moved to South Jersey from North Jersey, one of the very first messages I preached was on change. And uh, we had left the area in North Jersey where we were for around 20 years. We'd lived there a long time. Um, and I wrote this at that time. This is what I wrote at that time as we were leaving. Uh, it might have been like the week before we left or something to that effect. But here's what I wrote. Um, God has been faithful to keep our precious family sheltered in this house. Uh, obviously writing from the house that we were in for many years. It was our first house. And both our boys came home from the hospital here to this house. We've so easily grown to love and appreciate our neighbors on both sides in this house. It took me and a very dear friend a ridiculous amount of time to build my first and last swing set in this house. And but as sweet as it's been, today's moving day, nostalgia, anxiety, even fear, a little fear and sadness are looming in my thoughts, but overwhelming, overwhelmingly, my thoughts are found and can be noted in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 24. It says this, faithful is he who calls you, and he also will bring it to pass. Folks, whatever we're facing, whatever, this is a strange time. Faithful, faithful is he who calls you, and he also will bring it to pass. God is in charge. He's sovereign. He always has been. He is right now, and he always will be. Hope that encourages you today. If ever there was a time of change, this is it. Because of COVID-19, very little has remained the same. Uh, many of you are staying home. Grocery shopping looks bizarre. Hair salons are closed. That's interesting all by itself. That's interesting. And uh, if you have children, you're homeschooling. Um, this is why in the wild, some creatures eat their young. No, don't hurt them. <laughs> I applaud you folks. You're homeschooling your kids. Don't hurt them. <laughs> Hang in there. Hang in there. You'll get through it. Uh, let them live. <laughs> this will pass. And remember, it's hard for the kids too. It's just as hard for them, if not harder than it is for the adults. If you have children in your home and you're homeschooling, I really do, we pray for you. We pray for you. Um, I think we can all agree, no, that change can be very difficult, especially in this season. It's challenging. It could be a change in health. It could be a change in, in ministry, if you're involved in ministry, or maybe it's a change in a relationship that you've gone through, or maybe it's a change in your work situation, your job, whether you've been laid off in this season or you're continuing to work, but it looks different, right? All of that, or maybe you chose this is the time to, to retire, what have you. There's a lot of change going on. And there's always an element of pain when something needs to change or differ to, for, from what we're used to. Uh, listen, even when change is for good, it can still hurt. And, uh, and that truth is not all change is for good. Uh, some change is painful and it's sad, uh, even tragic. Uh, and then there are changes, there are some changes that change nothing. What? I'll say it again, there are some changes that occur that should change something, but don't seem to change anything. Uh, like people who maybe uh, get offended by a friend or a relative or, or even a church has offended me and, and well, I'm gonna take my ball and I'm gonna go home. I'm gonna go to a different church or I'm not talking to him anymore. I'm not talking to her anymore. And we expect change to come of that decision when it, essentially no change happens at all because we literally picked up our issues and we brought them with us. So some change is for nothing. Some change we cause for nothing. It doesn't change anything. We're gonna, another, we're gonna go to another church, we'll show them. And we really didn't realize that we were taking our problem and we were packing it up and we were just carrying it with us right into our next church or our next situation. Um, I'm still not happy. Couples divorce, 
Couples divorce thinking, well, this change will bring about what I want. This is going to make me happy. I need this. I deserve this. And so I'm going to change this. And, and uh, what they didn't realize is that's simply going to bring a whole other batch of problems. And it really wasn't for the betterment at all. It was just a new, it was just a new problem to be in. Well, today I want to talk about not just the negative, the positive, and the challenges that positive change creates, even positive, good things. I said earlier that good change even can create some painful situations, and we'll talk about that and how we overcome them. And just some quick examples, uh, so just some quick examples uh, this morning um, or evening or afternoon, whenever you're watching this. The first one is Abraham in Genesis chapter 12, verses 1 to 3. The Lord had said to Abraham in Genesis 12, verses 1 to 3, he said, leave your native country, your relatives, and your father's family, and go to the land that I will show you. I will make you into a great nation. I will bless you and make you famous, and you will be a blessing to others. I will bless those who bless you and curse those who treat you with contempt, and all the families on earth will be blessed through you. Wow. That's the beginning of the Israel nation, of the Israelites. That's the beginning of the Israelite nation. Wow. Different culture Abraham's were going into. New language, new, new traditions, all of it. The pain of leaving his relatives, his home, and all he's ever known, his friends behind for good, uh, picking up all of his family and everything he has. The risk of leaving the security of that for the unknown place that God is sending him to. But, God, but Abraham heard God and he see, sees the change and he's just simply going to honor God and obey him, and he does. And look at the blessings associated with the change Abraham was willing to face. His name and his family would be great. His name and his family would be great. God would give him many descendants. The world would be blessed through him. Abraham chose to honor God in the change. And today, Abraham's called what? The father of all those who have faith. He's the father of many nations. Father of all those who have, as Paul says in Galatians chapter 3, verse 7. Galatians chapter 3, verse 7, Paul says this. Therefore, be sure that it is those who are of faith who are sons of Abraham. What a blessing to be remembered that way. I'm going to read that again. Galatians chapter 3, verse 7. Therefore, be sure that it is those who are of faith who are sons of Abraham. Abraham just acted in trust, full trust. Boy, this is a scary season, isn't it? If we watch the news too long, we'll panic. Let me do me a favor. Do me a favor. Don't stay glued to the media. Don't do that. Don't do that. They're not encouraging you. They're not building you up and lifting you up. How much of it is false? How much of it is spun because they have an agenda that they want to share? How much of it is true? How much of it is not? But I'll tell you what, it's all designed for what? Ratings. And they just want you to watch. So if they can sensationalize it, they're going to sensationalize it. If they can drum up your attention, they're going to drum up your attention. Don't stay glued to the media. Do yourself a favor. Spend some time with the Lord, more so than with the media. They'll make you panic. They'll make you panic. It's what they're designed to do. Number two, example number two, after Abraham experiencing that change. Let's talk about Mary for a second. Mary, in Luke chapter 1, verses 26 to 38, this is a little lengthy. I'm going to read it, though. Mary, in the book of Luke, uh, chapter 1, verses 26 to, 20, uh, 26 to 38, verses. Right here it is, 20, verse 26. In the, in the sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a village in Galilee, to a virgin named Mary. And she was engaged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of King David. As we know, he was going to be a descendant of David, wasn't he? Jesus was going to be from that lineage, wasn't he? Beside the point. Verse 28. Gabriel appeared to her and said, Greetings, favored woman. The Lord is with you. And confused and disturbed, Mary tried to think what the angel could mean. Don't be afraid, Mary, the angel told her, for you have found favor with God. You will conceive and give birth to a son and you will name him Jesus, and he will be very great and will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his ancestor David, and he will reign over Israel forever. His kingdom will never end. 
And Mary asked the angel, but how can this happen? I am a virgin. And the angel replied, the Holy Spirit will come upon you and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the baby to be born will be holy and he will be called the Son of God. What's more, your relative Elizabeth has become pregnant in her old age. People used to say she was barren, but she has conceived a son and is now in her sixth month. Sixth month. For nothing is impossible with God. And Mary responded, I am the Lord's servant. May everything you have said about me come true. And then the angel left her. Wow. Talk about change. Talk about accepting change. <laughs> Not pregnant one day, pregnant the next. Think about this. Think about what she's facing. Her whole world is rocked. Nothing is ever going to be the same. Nothing's ever going to look the same. The possible loss of her reputation, the possible loss of her, of her fiance, her, her engaged husband, Joseph. He doesn't know anything, right? Also, the fact that she would always be different. She'd always be different. She'd always be considered different. Always live with this knowledge and experience that no one else can fully understand. Who, who do you confide in after a miraculous conception of a divine being? Who's she going to tell this story to? Who can she share this with? Who can say, oh, yep, I get you. I've experienced something. Nobody. She can't share that with anybody. Who could relate? Talk about lonely. Talk about different. Talk about change. But Mary also saw the blessing. And she would have favor with God. She would have favor with God. Do you see the thread here? When God brings about change, all I have to do is accept. And he himself will bring blessing. All I have to do is honor him. All I have to do is say, God, be it done unto me according to your will. It's not always easy to do. She would be the mother of a king, the Messiah, the son of God. Example number three. Here's an example of somebody who didn't want to. He didn't want to. He couldn't. Couldn't do it. It's the rich young ruler in Matthew chapter 19. In, in Matthew chapter 19, verses 16 to 22, there's a story about a rich young ruler, a wealthy young man. Here we go. And we're going to begin in verse 16. Someone came to Jesus with this question. Teacher, what good deed must I do to have eternal life? Why ask me about what is good? Jesus replied, there's only one who's good. But to answer your question, if you want to receive eternal life, keep the commandments. Which ones? The man asked. And Jesus replied, well, you must not murder. You must not commit adultery. You must not steal. You must not testify falsely. Right? Don't lie. Honor your father and your mother. Love your neighbor as yourself. And of course, Jesus already knew that this young man was going through the motions. He already knew he was jumping through all the correct hoops. Jesus wasn't telling this young man anything new. Jesus already knew what the young man was doing, that he was following all these things. He was following the letter of the law. Verse 20, I've obeyed all these commandments, the young man replied. What else must I do? Verse 21, Jesus told him, if you want to be perfect, go and sell all your possessions and give the money to the poor and you will have treasure in heaven and then come follow me. What kind of change would that have brought? What would that have looked like to this young ruler? I don't know what this guy's name is. Let's call, let's call him Billy Bob. I don't know what Billy Bob's life looked like, but he was obviously wealthy and he was obviously some kind of ruling class. He was obviously in charge. I don't know if he was a teacher or some sort of, but he was obviously well, very well off. What would that have looked like for Billy Bob to go and sell all that he had and just follow Jesus? When the young man heard this, verse 22, but when the young man heard this, he went away sad for he had many possessions. And he thought about the change that he would have to face. And Billy Bob decided, I can't do it. Today, right now, we might have uh, the gospel of Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, and Billy Bob had Billy Bob decided to follow Jesus. But in that moment, in that moment, this rich young ruler decided, and if your name is Billy Bob, forgive me. <laughs> I mean, no offense. But it, Billy Bob leaves. He doesn't want to change anything. He likes his life. He likes what he has. He likes his house. He likes his wealth. He likes, he likes the status. He likes his comfort level. He's not changing. He's not willing to change. He was willing to continue doing what he had done. And I think maybe he was just looking for an accolade. Maybe he was just looking for a pat on the back. Or maybe he thought, well, maybe there's some little thing 
that can, that can bring me up even higher in my own opinion on the scale of, of how, how, good a, how good a guy I am. And it didn't work. And it didn't work. And there is no gospel of Billy Bob today because he didn't want to change. Note the change facing this, this guy. Like he would have had to change it, like really everything. He would have had to change his value system. He would have had to change his lifestyle. He valued money, security, all of that. The prestige, obviously. And Jesus meets him and he challenges him and he, and he tells him, you have to change. You're gonna, if you're going to change, it's going to be at your core. Your core values literally have to change. From the comfort and assurance that all this wealth was providing him, um, he would have had to go on straight to trusting Jesus to provide for him for everything. He wasn't willing to do that. He couldn't. Jesus personally asked him, follow me. Come with me. Sell all you have and follow me. And uh, just like he had asked James and John and Peter and Matthew and all of them, right? And they did. They, they chose to change. They followed him. The apostles picked, dropped everything. They, they, they picked themselves up and followed after Jesus. They changed everything, their lives, their belief systems, um, their, their jobs, uh, in order to follow Jesus as his as disciples. And I, uh, you know, as I said, I think that we would have had a very different story had this young man chosen to follow Jesus. Well, here's a challenge for us today as we leave the examples behind here. If our faith in Christ, if our faith is in Christ, no matter what this season is bringing to us, no matter what the changes are, no matter how different it looks, and boy, does it look different, uh, we are going to remain steadfast. All of our peace, all of our joy, all of our foundation comes from the Holy Spirit. It comes from Jesus himself. It comes from our relationship with the Lord. It doesn't come from anything that we have, anything that we own, or anything that we did. Our jobs have changed. This has changed. That's changed. Our incomes have shifted a little. Some of us are laid off. Some of us aren't working. Some of us have unemployment. Some don't. Some are working. Uh, some are still working, but boy, does it look different, right? But our foundation is Christ. We were just celebrating Easter and what Jesus did and what Jesus did just a few weeks ago changed every moment of every day of every year for eternity. For every, every moment of every day of every year for eternity, Jesus changed by coming back from the dead. Proverbs chapter 18 verse 10 says this. Proverbs chapter 18 verse 10 says this. And this is all in the NIV. The name of the Lord is a fortified tower or a strong tower, depending on your version. And the righteous run into it, and they are safe. And they are saved. We are looked over. We rest in the palm of, of God's hand. And Jesus will not leave you. He will not forsake you. I hope that encourages you today. And I hope it stirs you up to encourage someone else. We are living in a strange new era. If you would have told me two months ago, just a couple months ago, if you would have told me we're all going to be wearing masks in public <coughs> and um, most of us will be staying indoors from now on and our kids are out of school indefinitely uh, and it's super hard to find regular pancake flour. Did you know that? It was just me. I, it's, it's been, I would have said you're nuts and, and yet here we are. Yeah, I had, like, we, I've been, one of the things my kids love and, and my wife Andrea is so, She's one of the best pancake makers I've ever met. The best, best pancake maker. And she requ requires this particular pancake flour. And it's, you know, there's a couple different kinds. There's a whole wheat and there's complete and there's this brand and there's that brand. No, nope, none of that. And, the, and, and the, just a plain old pancake flour that she uses was very difficult to find. Even that's changed. In our house, that's traumatic. Because boy, my boys are, my boys love their mom's pancakes. And, I, and I, I do too, although I try, to, I try to save them for them. I really do. I promise you, I'm not lying. <laughs> I, I'm in the store. It's hard. They're hard. It's hard to find this pancake flour. I had to arm wrestle somebody for the last two boxes of Aunt Jemima pancake flour. Just, it was rough, man. It was rough. I had to literally get in a, in a physical scuffle. I thought I was going to get hurt. I did all right once I kicked her cane out from underneath her. I was able to get the pancake from her and I got it. But no, I'm, I'm, I'm joking. Please don't think that that's true. It's not. But life is different. Things we thought we could find, we can't find. Things we thought you could just zip into the store and do. You can run over here and run over there and get this done and knock this out. Nothing looks the same. Nothing's the same. 
I'm going to ask the same tough question this, this morning or whenever it is you're watching this that I did six years ago when I preached this message on change. And change does bring some pain and just brings difference. But I'm going to ask a question that I asked in August of 2014. It was my very first month here. My very first month here. And my, this might have very well have been my very first message here. Or parts of it anyway. I borrowed from it. Is your faith and your relationship with Jesus Christ, is that the basis of your peace, of your joy, of your contentment, of your stability? Living in a strange time, I'm going to ask you right now, is Christ your source? Do you feel happy, content, at peace? I'm not saying there's nothing to worry about. There might be some finances and and some physical issues and some health stuff. There's, com- there's concerns. Listen, but there's a difference between allowing anxiety and fear to consume me. That's sin. Who through fear or anxiety can for a, mo- for a moment add one single day to your life? No one, right? It's okay to have concerns. But I'll ask the question again. Are you happy? Are you at peace? Are you stable? Is Christ your center? If he's not, he can be. Christian, non-Christian, he can be. Jesus is our center. He's our source. He's our foundation. Listen, I think Jesus is stretching us. I think Christ is stretching us today. Um, Clearly, it's not business as usual uh, anymore. Um, And I guess... I guess I'm wondering to myself, maybe this is what God needed to do to get our attention, Christian. Maybe this is what God needed to do to get our attention. You say God, are you saying God caused this? Well, God is sovereign. He can cause it if he wants to. He can allow it if he wants to. He can stop it on a dime if he wants to. God is God, he's sovereign. What I know is, He wants our attention. Does he have it? Does he have it? Faithful, Christian, follower of Christ, hear me. If this hasn't gotten our attention, if we've not drawn into the word and into prayer over this season, what does God need to do to get our attention? What does he need to do to get the church to rise up and say it's time to pray like we've never prayed? It's time to read the word and study like we never have. It's time to call the people I love, my neighbors, my friends, my family. It's time to reach out with the gospel, with the good news, as I've never done before. What's it going to take for God to get our attention and get us moving? How does he mobilize? How will God mobilize the church if not through an incident like this? There's many ways. I'm not God. There's there's any number of ways. But boy, I think this is one of them. I think this is one of them. What needs to happen to our for us to understand our our stability doesn't come from government. Doesn't come from government. Doesn't come from the political uh, choices that are being made. Certainly, we pray for our leaders. Yes, those things are important, and we pray, and they matter. But that's not where our stability comes from. It doesn't come from our job or even from our family, our our peace, our stability. Although we love them. Um, It says in the book of Acts, chapter 17, verse 28. The first part of that verse, Acts chapter 17, verse 28, says, For in him we live and move and have our being. That's true in Christ. Not in my job, not in my vocation, not in my education, not in the letters behind my name. Not in any doctrine or any position or any, even relatives, even family and even children, nothing. All in, for in him, who him? In Christ, we live and move and have our being. Mm. I had someone once tell me, well, if it's truly God that's bringing about change, well, then there's no pain that comes with it. No, no, when God brings change, it doesn't, it doesn't come with pain. No, when God, if God moves, it's all smooth and it's good. And 
Nothing could be further from the truth. Can God bring change smoothly, fluidly? Of course he can. He's able. Trust him to do that. He's done that so many times within my life. And I've also seen when God brought change with conflict, with stretching, with challenge, with all kinds of, of, of issues to work through because it made me depend on him made me trust him more. Look, if you don't have a relationship with Christ this morning, I'm gonna encourage you to contact us. As each week we've been encouraging folks to contact us and several of you have. God bless you. We're praying for you, we're reaching out to you. Let me encourage you to contact us if you don't have a relationship with Christ and you don't really understand what I'm talking about. That, that peace, that foundation, that, that, that joy uh, even in the midst of all this turmoil. Uh, but if you do have a relationship with Christ, don't let this time pass. Don't let this drastic time of stretching and challenge, don't let it be a time of panic and, and pushing away. No, l let it be a time where we're flourishing in our faith, where it draws us closer, where it draws us to our knees in prayer and into the word. Talk to each other, call each other encourage each other, fellowship with each other over the phone, social media, whether it's you know Twitter or Facebook or, or what have, Instagram, whatever it is. There's so many different ways. Do that, do that, spread the gospel. Most people certainly can't say anymore, I don't have time to pray. I don't have time to pray, I don't have time to read the word, oh, I'm so busy, pastor. And these days, you're gonna be able to find some time. I think a whole lot of us have more time than we used to in, in several different ways. Take advantage of it. Reach out, make those phone calls, send those online messages, spread the encouragement, spread the love, spread the gospel. Let's pray this morning together. Father, we thank you for your goodness and your grace. We are, we are challenged today. We are, by all that's going on, we are challenged, we are moved, we are stretched, we are, many of us, struggling in various ways, but we trust you and we love you and we ask you, make us better, make us better. Help us not just to focus inward, but to focus all around, all around, to those who so desperately need us to share the gospel with them. We love you, we pray this in Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Well, God bless you. We're praying that God will protect you during this time. We're praying that God will give you new challenges and new opportunities to be fruitful for the kingdom of God. God bless you.